So hold okay. on. Recording is on and you can go ahead. Okay. I'm a front end engineer at YouTube on the video ads team. Um, I help build web apps to enable advertisers to utilize YouTube and Google video partner platforms to show uh, their ads. Today, I'll be talking about testing best practices, um, what I've learned so far doing what I do. So I've read somewhere that the ideal test scenario is where you test every line of code that you wrote um, or copied, but that sounds like for me horrible and definitely not feasible. Um, it is quite time consuming and requires a lot of effort to uh, first um, set your testing infrastructure, but it is, I uh, promise you, downhill from there, so it is a good investment. Most likely, you're not the sole contributor to your code base, so test act as guard against harmful code being submitted. And it does help for um, uh, faster development. You'll have less code breaks, um, less rollbacks, um, and less pages. So it is a great investment. So an unhealthy test state should block your submission. You should not submit your code if the tests, if the tests are failing. So I'm going to cover just the basic type of test and it's related to front end development. So you have your basic component test, um, test the small pieces of your code. And then if you're, if you have a user facing UI, you would have a screenshot test. And then uh, finally a web driver test, which uh, mimics the user's journey. So if I had to think of a of a backend equivalent, I would go with um, a functional test. So as you can see from the pyramid, um, the, the, um, the base tests usually um, take less resources. So they take less time to set up and less time to run. So you want to have as many component tests as you can and then add as you go higher in the pyramid. So if a component test fails, you know that it, it, it most likely is a functional issue. If a screen, if a screen a test fails, then it's a UI issue. And if it's a web driver test, it, it might be an API or a service issue or something wrong uh, with your uh, production environment. So um, first, the component test. So mainly, they're just the building blocks of your um, app view. So first thing, do not expose internal implementation for the sake of testing. As you can see here, you can see the library database is public. It does not need to be. So to interact with your um, database, you should have uh, public methods. And then you can have a validator um, that validates if the data is okay or if there are errors. So um, on the right hand side, you make your library, uh, library private. And then if you want to um, test the validity of your data, you can um, call is book valid and then just add it. So continuing on the previous point, do interact with inputs and outputs and public APIs. So in a web app, you have HTML elements. Um, don't access an HTML element and change, its, uh, and change it via its uh, properties and methods. There are many web testing frameworks. For example, you have uh, page objects that wrap um, HTML elements and abstract as uh, many details as you don't really care about them. So as you can see from, from the right, it's, it's very intuitive. So you have your input and then you type. So you're, you're interacting with your input and then you're checking is, is something visible? Is it hidden as opposed to the left side where you need to know about the property of the element and the method it supports? Um, this is something that I had to learn the hard way. In fact, I have a, a lot of cleanups to do this. 
uh, this cycle. So do not mock dependencies. It can be very tempting because it is, um, it does make um, writing your test much faster. But imagine if you have here um, a, a transcript constructor that injects a student RPC model. So the RPC model returns certain information that you, that you need. In the mocks, which is not recommended, you can override the get transcripts method but um, it just hides future changes and it might not work for every scenario. So for example, if I wanna throw an error when I have, when I call get transcript. So uh, from, from my experience, I would, I would argue that the more um, complicated your dependency is, the, the stronger argument against mocking it. Um, I would, I would mock um, if I had an RPC, uh, sorry, if I had a model, for example, that just reads um, the URL and extracts its parameters, then maybe that's a good, um, that's a, it's a, it's a good case to, to just mock it and then move testing that model into a, a, just its own test. So what, what should you do? You should fake your service dependency. So in case of the, of the student RPC model, it uses the, the transcript service. So what you can do is, uh, of course, there are um, testing frameworks that also help you do that, is if you have a fake request handler, and then you add conditions and say, okay, if my test fires an, a, a transcript service, then respond with this data or respond with, with an exception. And also, if you think about backend test, if you have a, a database, you can also fake it with an in-memory storage. You can just Google fake requests in test and depending uh, what technology you're using, you, you'll find a solution. Do test component state. So if you have a component and has buttons, inputs, and you wanna check, okay, if the button is enabled, if, if an error message is visible, if the load spinner exists, all this should be in a component test. So we come to a screenshot test. So if your app has a UI facing part, you have to test how the UI looks do not test the UI state. So for example, if, if your UI changes and something is disabled, do not take a screenshot test just to make sure that something is disabled. This should be in a component test. If your uh, app is responsive, then you should add a screen size test for your UI changes because um, this breaks your, your customer experience. So this is a valid case to have a Screenshot test. Um, mask fl flaky UI components. Um, components that take time to render. You really don't care about them in um, a screenshot test, so just mask them. Um, a web driver test usually mimics the user's journey, so uh, to using your app. So you load your app, enter information, and then uh, verify the, the end state, the successful or and the unsuccessful state. So best practices, do not test for the sake of, tech, for the sake of testing. It's not a checkbox that you just need to tick and move on. So they should be meaningful. So test one thing at a time. In your test case, do not jam many testing scenarios in one. If a test case fails, you want it to give you the proper signals to where to look, to where to look. Um, so that saves time, less headache, and the sooner you get this over with, the better. Okay, this is something I struggled with last year. So do not share state between tests. So if you have two test cases, A and B, running A and then B should be the same as running B and then A. So you can, you can guard against this by having um, a setup that, for example, clears your uh, test uh, state at the beginning of running each test case. Also, if there's data to be shared between your test cases, you can, you can uh, use immutability and um, many languages support that. 
Um, for example, if you're, if you're using proto messages, you can freeze them, you can use build sets. So it just ensures that you don't make um, a mistake unintentionally. Okay, regression test with every, bugs happen, right? So with every bug fix, a test should be added or updated. Um, do retry test, this is tricky. Um, so if you have a, let's say if you have a test case that uploads a video to YouTube. So if the upload fails, do not have the retry logic in the test case itself. This is, this is not what the test case is for. So what you need to do, and this is supported by your testing framework, is run the entire test again. So ideally, um, for, for example, you would set up to run your test twice, and if it, they need to pass for it to be successful, to pass on those two tries. And then if, um, if it passes on the first try and fails on the second one, that might be a signal that your test is flaky. So what you need to do is maybe check the contract with the, with your, with the public API that you're using um, and, and then just follow that in, 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 a, in, a, in a different, um, it's, it's just a, a different path. If this, is, this should not be tested in the test case. Uh, do log. So you have to um, log errors or warnings, unhandled except, uh, exceptions. So imagine if you have a switch case and do you care about a case that you're not handling? Um, is it okay for it to default? Um, do you wanna log something? So those logs should be consumed by monitoring systems. So these monitoring systems would alert you, for example, if suddenly you have many er um, errors in, in, a, in a certain time frames or, or something that you need to look at, something unexpected. So um, I mostly, in my development, um, I mostly use Angular, Dart, and Java, and those are, and a lot of open source. Uh, so those are some of the resources um, that you can check. Uh, some code labs to go through, which are fun. Thank you so much. And I'm done with my presentation. Thank you so much, Miriam. Uh, we have a question uh, from Haider. Uh, should you also test switching between states? Like how Ahmed pointed out, the FaceTime features being developed separately, but they are causing errors uh, when used together. Is there a checklist with the do's and don'ts uh, you'd recommend? I think um, that's the second question. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it depends on what you, honestly, of, of what you mean by switching states. So it's, if, if the... If that can be moved to a component test, I'd rather have a component test because as you imagine, it, as a developer, honestly, you want to submit your code as soon as possible, right? You want it to be, you, you want it to be healthy and you want it to be in as soon as possible. So um, you want your test also to, to give you a positive signal where if that will break something or won't break something. So if that change can be moved to a component test because it does, they do run faster, then I would have it moved to um, uh, a component test. UI should, should only, honestly, like the minimum possible of UI screen, uh, of UI test as possible, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, second question from Heather was, is there a checklist of do's and don'ts that you would recommend? Yeah, there, I mean, there, there are, but I don't think anyone has the time to go through them all, but there are basic ones. You can, um, depending on whichever technology that you're using, they, they would have um, guidelines, but it also um, comes honestly from experience as well. With developing, you kind of um, know what works and what doesn't work. But there okay. are. Yeah. Third question. Uh, there are some tools that help with testing code or applications. Uh, what is uh, uh, what is your thought in using such tools? And are there specific tools you can recommend? Um, well, uh, no, I don't know about recommending, but yeah, it's a must. Um, you have to have some testing framework installed. It, honestly, it is, it is hard to, and 
for me, it's, it's something that I hate doing, but I do. Uh, because on the long run, it will save you a lot of time. So it will take time to set up choosing a testing framework. Don't spend too much time. I mean, are you using Python or whichever um, language that you use or whichever technology that you're developing in? Usually they would have a list of uh, frameworks, testing frameworks. Just choose one. Choose one. It's maintained. Um, uh, not something just... Um, uh, just pub was published and just invest in it and go with it. Just don't do, don't spend too much time making a choice. Honestly, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, once you made that in investment, just commit to it. For example, uh, what we have is pre-submit checks. So um, if your tests are failing, do not ignore them. Then what's the use of having tests if you're ultimately uh, going to ignore them? Okay, one more question popped up. The problem with testing that is that worst case scenario, you'd write twice. Uh, what's a good guideline that something on front end needs testing, such as forms, uh, for example? So, um, you, it's like f f front end, um, so let, let's say in forms, you don't have to test the form component. What you have to test is your use case. So how are you using that component should be tested. You should not be, te for example, let's like give a simpler example, um, a button, right? So you don't have to uh, test, okay, if I set this property, it is disabled. If I click on it, it fires an event. You don't have to do that. But in your um, app, for example, if you click on it, does it, um, does it have a pop-up? then this is what you test. If I click, then a pop-up appears. So you test your use case in your app. You don't test the component itself unless you built it from scratch. So yeah, I agree. You don't, have, you don't want too many tests or um, components that were already tested. Okay. Uh... Yeah, he's asking as in the happy scenario. I'm not sure what he means. I don't know what a happy scenario is. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, I guess not. Uh, Fawaz, uh, what was your question? Oh, uh, from a scale of one to 10, how important it is uh, to test, especially when it comes to small pieces of code or small projects? Oh, 10 plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Even for small projects. Yes. It's honestly, it's, it's a habit, right? It's, it's yeah. not just about testing. It's just a habit. Eventually you'll grow. So you need to just develop that habit. I guess it's like using Git. You have to develop it into a habit that you have to keep using yeah. Git all the time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Mariam. And sorry to wake you up. I know it's almost 7 a.m. in no, San Francisco. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording.